Hello and welcome to another Murders at Karlov Manor Draft. I'm Paul Chion and we are currently rank number 14. We've done some climbing offline. We've done some climbing offline and it's really exciting to be number 14. Maybe we can get out of the teens with a really, really good run. So let's go ahead and hop into a draft here. Let's go ahead and hop into a draft and uh, hope to open something nice. Now before this draft starts, I did want to say that if you wanted to support this channel in other ways, I did launch my Patreon channel. Shout out to all the current patrons, really do appreciate it. The link is in the description below if you wanted to check it out. Ready to go? Let's open something nice. War Leaders Call. War Leaders Call. Well, well, well. Hey, I'm trying not to draft Boros, but like, what do I do? You know what I mean? Arena just keeps giving me Boros rares. Like, I gotta take it, right? The other best cards in this pack are Push Pull, Nervous Gardener, Dog Walker. I mean, I'm trying to hit rank one. I gotta do it. I'll take it. I mean, Boros is heavily contested. Boros might not be open, but if it is... Obviously, I'm really, really going to want to have the War Leader's Call. And it's possible that I can be like a green, a base green deck and splash the War Leader's Call as well. Like here, interesting pack. Axe Bane Ferox, Coerce to Kill and Buried in the Garden. I'm going to take one of those cards. I just don't know which one. You know, I actually think I'm going to take Buried in the Garden here over Axe Bane Ferox. Let me know in the, descri in the chat below if you think that's crazy. But this helps me fix... This allows me to draft something sweet. I can go green, white, splash red, which is probably where we're going to want to be. But this just allows us to splash the War Leader's Call a little more. And it's a premium removal spell. I do like Course to Kill. I do like Axe Bane Ferox. I think it's between one of the two green cards. But I'm going to take the Buried here. I'm going to take the Buried. All right. Moving on. Moving on. This also sets us up for... This also sets us up to draft something cool, right? There's a Rune Brand Juggler in this pack. Not interested in that. I think the card I'm looking at here is probably like V2 Gazi Inspector or Escape Tunnel. But I think it's early enough where if I take this Escape Tunnel, we can really start cooking. But I do really like V2 Gazi Inspector in the type of deck where I'm looking to go a lot of different colors. But yeah, let's... This, this is far more exciting of a start, right? War Leader's Call was just a bump in the journey that we're going to take here to get to rank one. Okay? To get to rank one. And this pack is interesting. There is a Galvanize, a Tunnel Tipster, Market Watch Phantom, I guess, if you wanted to get really aggressive. But generally, in decks that's playing multicolors, I, I value having the ramp creature more than the aggressively slanted creature. So I think this is going to be Tunnel Tipster here over Galvanize. Over the Galvanize. That's how much I like the Tunnel Tipster in these types of decks. And I do want to be green. Green is kind of like the, my favorite color that I want to be. And now we have this pack. There is an Offender at Large if I wanted to go red-green. These blue cards aren't that great. I think I'm going to take one of these face-down cards. I just don't know which one. I guess I'll take the Crocodile just because this one is just always going to make my deck as a green face down card. Whereas the Offender at Large, I mean, it's a little bit worse if my red is on the splash. Whereas this, I know I'm going to be able to flip up pretty often. I think it's pretty close. If I can play it face up, the Offender at Large is a little bit better. But this keeps my options open. All right, it does look like red and green are the colors I need to be, so maybe I should have taken the Offender at Large. But like I said before, I think it was close enough. But I'm going to take Case of the Burning Masks here, and it looks like we're probably going to look to try to be maybe a red-green deck splashing white here. With the Case of the Burning Masks. I mean, I don't even know how open green is, but we're not seeing a whole lot of white either. We're only seeing mostly red cards. Here, there's a person of interest. I think this is enough better than Public Thoroughfare that I'm going to take it. It is also very, very good with War Leader's Call. So let's go ahead and do that. Also, tips are just a great card in this set in general, just because there's always... You rarely run out of stuff to do with your mana. With the combination of cracking clues, flipping up disguise creatures, I mean, the, the tipster just does a lot of work. 
Here I'll take fanatical strength over basically nothing. And I'm really happy about this over the galvanize. We are our, our split between creatures and spells right now. I mean, we have four spells of three creatures, so just when you're playing a deck like War Leader's Call, you also just want to make sure you have a lot of creatures in your deck, right? You don't want to be playing War Leader's Call in your control deck, for example, and have this pump like three of your creatures. Here, this doesn't feel like I want on the job. Unless I go red-white. I'm going to take Fairy Snoop in case I just end up in some weird blue-green deck. It's just another face-down card. And now we have the choice between Vengeful Creeper and Gadget Technician. But given that we're going to be um, pretty heavy into red and we have the War Leader's Call, going white is also nice. I'm going to take the Gadget Technician here. And now I'll take Offender at Large. In a multicolor deck, This because I don't think this is going to be Boros, I, I don't like the Red Herring as much. So I think I'm going to take Offender at Large here. Red Herring is a lot better. Yeah, Red is super open. Red Herring is a lot better if you're red-white and really trying to close the door very, very quickly. Whereas I think this is kind of more mid-rangey. And I don't like Red Herring as much in the in that color combination. Here I'm going to take uh, Repulsive Mutation. That's another fun card to splash. Really, really powerful. So we're going to be red-green splashing these two white cards. We're going to need to get more mana fixing though. But I'm going to take the Re Repulsive Mutation. This is... Uh, one of the mythic uncommons of the set, I believe. This card is fantastic. All right, now I'm going to look at... I'm going to just take Loxodon Eavesdropper out of this pack. Do need to be mindful of the twos, but I still think it's early enough. And I love Eavesdropper in my mid-range style decks. So I'm going to take it over Sanitation Automaton. And kind of liking this base. Tabling those offenders at large were pretty nice. Definitely on the lookout for... I mean, now that we're splashing white and blue, Public Thoroughfare, we could play. Gravestone Strider is a card I'd be interested in playing, um, along with, of course, any number of Nervous Gardeners. Alrighty, what do we have here? That's a Person of Interest. Another nice go-wide creature, but get, there's a better go-wide card in A Killer Among Us. This card is incredible with War Leader's Call and just one of the best uncommons in the set. So I'm happily going to take Killer Among Us. Fuss Bother, also one of the best uncommons in the set. And also pretty good, but I think Killer Among Us is better for this deck. So I'm going to take that. But Fuss Bother and Person of Interest are both cards I would be happy playing here. And now we have this pack. No great creature that I want. Makeshift Binding is very good. But I don't know that I want to push my mana to basically splash another white removal spell when I can just take Shock. And Shock is also a premium common that I'm very happy with playing. Um, it lets you get back some tempo and we're light on things to do early. So I think it's I think it's the perfect card here. You know, it's actually interesting. If I had the choice between these two and, and I could have, I could tap my mana for any color, I might still take Shock here just because of the lack of cheap things to, for, for my deck to do right now. This is a blank of a pack. I don't really like Felonious Rage in a red-green. I like it more in red-white. Uh, there's the there's an orangutan and like a hustle and bustle I could consider, but this this is basically a blank. I guess I'll take a hustle bustle if I feel like I need an overrun effect, but I'm not the biggest fan of that card in general. And now we have the choice. This is this one's pretty big. This there's a choice between Person of Interest, which I think would go really well with kind of the go white stuff that we're trying to do. The Mortuary is not great because black is the only color that we're not playing. But I'm gonna take the Panther here. I want to really play these cards on the splash, and I do need mana fixing. So as much as I like Person of Interest, I'm gonna take the Panther here just to make sure that my deck functions. Right, just to make sure that my deck functions and can cast all these cards. Now we have Person of Interest, which I'm going to take over Gadget Technician here. I do believe that it's better. Double red to flip this up is not trivial as well. So I just like the fact that Person of Interest just puts two bodies by itself on the battlefield. Ooh, and one of the best combat tricks in the format in Get a Leg Up. So we are looking very, very good there with... Um, Get a leg up, fanatical strength as combat tricks. We're really good on the spells. We just need more things to do early and mana fixing. Those are the types of cards that we're looking for now. We just want two drops. I don't think I'm playing this Rubble Belt Maverick. 
we just want cheap cards, cheap creatures, tunnel tipsters, V2 Gazi inspectors. Um, Reckless Detective would be awesome. More shocks and galvanizes, I guess, but I'd prefer creatures. Those are things that we're looking for in this deck to be able to cast all of our spells. Here, I'll take Lux, uh, Unyielding Gatekeeper. It's a perfectly fine card on the splash. Scene of the Crime is also an option, but we're already splashing white, so I think this card is very, very good. So I'll take the Unyielding Gatekeeper out of this pack. Could play it on turn two, but it's, but it's really hard. <laughs> but it's really, really difficult. Okay, moving on to this pack. I mean, there's a makeshift binding, but do I really want... Do I really want to take another white card here? Or do I just take another person of interest? I'm just going to take another person of interest. I think we have enough spells at this point. I'm just going to take another good creature from my deck. It goes really, really well with, like, get a leg up, for example. All right, I'm taking Gravestone Strider over Red Herring in this pack just because of all the different colors that we're looking to splash. So I think the fixing is what we need, and we need a two drop, so I'm going to take it over the Eavesdropper and the Red Herring. Okay, more cheap stuff. No cheap stuff. There's no cheap stuff in this pack. Uh, our deck's looking to go pretty wide, so I think the Crowd Control Warden can be pretty good. We have Triple Person of Interest, A Killer Among Us, and Gadget Technician as ways to make extra tokens. So I think I prefer this to the Undercover Crocodile as another 3-mana card. All right, Nervous Gardener, Tunnel Tipster. Those are the cards that we want. None of those is in this pack. Okay, so this is interesting. We have the option of another Topiary Panther, or we could take Glint Weaver. Glint Weaver is pretty phenomenal. Glint Weaver is pretty phenomenal. We don't have any Collect Evidence cards. I think I'm just going to take the Glint Weaver here. Wow. Okay, so there's an Archdruid's Charm and a Gravestone Strider. Here, okay, this one hurts me. This one hurts me badly, but we have two two drops. We have two two drops and a shock. I need to take another creature here, and I need the mana fixing. Uh, as much as I want, as much as the charm is good, and it, it is very good, I think I have no choice but to take the strider. And, oh, can I play this as well? I don't have any black permanents, though, but I might need to play this as well just for the mana fix. Oh, and now we got another glint weaver. Do we play both? I don't want a Fender at Large number four. Now I wish I took the Panther. I didn't expect to get two Glint Weavers. I did not expect to get two Glint Weavers. Okay, there's a Red Herring. Do I play Red Herring in this deck? I mean, I, don't, I feel like Red Herring and Glint Weaver do not belong in the same deck. So I, I, don't, I don't think so. Okay, that's a last pick on the job. Wow. All right. This should be a pretty interesting build. I usually don't build my green decks with this type of mana base. Uh, probably not playing the red herring. Probably want to play like one plains, one island, and like some 13, 14, uh, maybe like eight forests. Yeah, eight forests. Okay. Okay. And then let's figure out our deck. All right, this goes here. These are our threes. And this goes like here, I guess. All right, this is our deck. It's got power for sure. Wish I had a black creature to be able to trigger this. Let's, let's look again. There's a fairy snoop, but I can't really flip it up. Right, I can't, like I don't have the mana. So I don't think it's worth it just to have the chance of being able to flip it up. So probably something I don't do. But I might still play the case anyways, just for my mana fixing. Okay, I think I don't I I I don't have enough tunnel tipsters to probably play two of these. I do have Buried in the Garden and the Tunnel Tipster, but I feel like we can probably shave one of the Glint Weavers. And probably can cut the crocodile. I like the fact that I can hard cast the offenders at large on five if I need to. Gives you a little more flexibility there. But of course, you can play this on three. And then we can either cut 
we have what 17 lands with case panther tipster i wonder if we can shave on a land or if i can just cut something like the case the thing is normally this is a pretty big cost because playing this on turn two means you're not playing a two drop but in this deck that lacks all the twos it's probably pretty important for us to just be able to find the land because i think it's important for us to be able to cast war leaders call on three so for that reason, can we go down to five mountains or is it seven forests? No, I think it's probably five mountains because the one green thing that we have to do on turn two is, is uh, the tunnel tipster and then the topiary panther helps us find the other colors. It does make case of the burning masks a little awkward, but I think that's okay. And we have double gravestone strider. I don't think our mana is going to be that bad. So let's give this a shot. It's, it's kind of a... Green didn't feel open, and we still somehow ended up in some kind of a four-color green deck. But one of the main reasons why I want to play that case is I think it's really important for us to find, to be able to play War Leader's Call on 3. Because being able to go War Leader's Call on 3 into the Person of Interest is kind of, I think, the, the primary game plan for this deck. And with the... Basically, uh, we have Panther, Double Strider, and the case... That all help us get the planes to make that happen. All right, so Gravestone Strider here. Face up Nervous Gardener. Okay. Oh, there it is. Attack. <laughs> All right, is it time for person of interest? Okay, they played a face down card. Oh, buried in the garden. That's interesting. Yeah, the real question here is whether or not I want to use this just to ramp me. You know what I mean? It's like... It, it's not the fact, I mean, obviously I'm not killing a, a gigantic creature, but I feel my creatures are going to be big anyways, right? So it's more uh, a way for me to just like start playing face-up offenders at large and topiary panthers. So I actually think that that's correct. Like I said, this is mostly just a ramp. This is mostly just a ramp, given the nature of our hand. Because now if I draw um, if I draw a land, I can go double face down creature. Or, if, or I can even potentially play the panther. If I don't draw a land, like I said, I can face up the offender at large. And oh, this also gave us the fixing that we needed. So had we not cast the bear in the garden, we would have been in some trouble. I'm just going to play this face up. Target up to one creature. Then we'll play the tunnel. Just my creature quality is going to be very, very high here. They're going to have to... Sp so with the war leader's call, yeah, I'm liking this. Let's crack this. What do we get? Not forest. I guess we get the planes. In case they kill the buried in the garden. What is this? Out cold on one creature. I will allow it. Let's play Panther. 7 6 Trampler and take one. I do have Gravestone Strider in the yard, so I have to look at the graveyard here. Hot shot. Oh, that's good. Okay. All right. They're doing some, some tempo stuff. I kind of want to kill this face down card. Hmm. Yeah, I'm going to do that. It was a vengeful creeper. Ha ha ha. 
They would have killed our war leader's call. I bet they're like, darn. <laughs> yeah, that would have been a pretty decent turnaround for sure. Interesting. Okay. I mean, they might, if they, they need, to, what do they have? Another out cold? Locks it on eavesdropper. Okay. The thing is, if they don't block, they just die. Let me think. Because this can be this can get uh unblockable. I'm just curious how they're gonna block. If they find a way to deal with my Panther, then that's really bad. I wonder if I'm supposed to just attack with Defender at large, this one, and then play like the Panther. Because I won't be able to flip this up if I want to play the Panther. Hmm. I'm going to attack. If they block with the eavesdropper, I can flip this up, right? If they block with the eavesdropper, I can flip this up. Or I can just play a panther, which is just a bigger creature, and it tramples. Actually, I'm going to just do that, because that also just gives me a blocker. So this is the safer line. This is the safer line. Um, that It allows me to block like the investigators. They can crack the clue and attack and loot, but I have a 7-6 trampler and a 6-5, and I can hit them for two more here with the person of interest. But they have a lot of looks here. If they can find something like an out cold, then I'm probably dead. But they had one card in hand. And we have two lethal attackers, one of which is a 7-6 Trampler. But we all know blue is tricky. Blue is tricky. Bite down on crime would kill us. Tunnel Tipster does not. Okay. So the Furtive Courier can attack. I mean, we're attacking with both. They're both lethal attacks. So the... Hotshot Investigators has to get in front of the Topiary Panther, and then they'll take three. Oh, I guess that's not lethal, though. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, God. Don't quite have enough. Don't quite have enough here. So we can get them down to one? Oh my gosh. Oh, you know what I should have done? Maybe I should have played um, Locks It on Eavesdropper and cracked the clue. Because um, I could find Get a Leg Up. I don't think I have any other one drops in my deck other than the shock and get a leg up. So I'm just going to pass. If they play a flyer, if they if they get a flyer into play here, then I can still dig and try to find get a leg up. But yeah, they, they have basically two draws at finding some kind of disruptive element to get the eavesdropper off the battlefield and then we die. What a close game. Hotshot investigators and out cold doing some work. Oh, this could be Greenbelt Radical. That's not enough. Oh no, it's not one damage short, it's just enough! Oh my gosh, okay, here we go. I don't know how to pay for this. I don't want to auto-pay like that. 
Wow, this is me not knowing how to pay for mana. I, I don't... How do I pay... It gave me a white. Oh, it didn't matter. All right. Well played opponent. Really, really well played. They... I mean, I felt like I had to attack the way that I did. But... No, that was a that was a tight one where they got just enough damage in and I was not able to close out the game. <sighs> now I'm wondering if there's anything I could have just like every time I played the the problem was it was a game where I just kept playing like large monsters and um like the hotshot investigator stuff like that was just giving them so much tempo. So, I don't know that I could have like I didn't have a lot of complex game actions there, right? It's just like Play my creature. Play my creature. Attack you. Attack you. That's all I could have done. So. That's definitely more one of those. Okay, well, it was a tight game and I just lost. Right? It was a tight game and I lost. And there's not much I could have. I don't think there's much I could have done there. Like I'm always I'm always looking to improve and try to find things I could have done differently. I'm not sure that there were too many. I mean, I cast the buried in the garden. I actually think that was correct. I don't even know that we lost. I think the buried in the garden was definitely not bad. Nice aggressive start from the opponent. I imagine they're going to want to play a creature here. All right. Yep, this is a nice one, two, three. Hmm. I'm going to play the eavesdropper and just pass. We're... I just need to try to slow them down just a little bit. And if I attack with my face down card and they kill my eavesdropper, it's such a beating that I kind of feel like while I'm on the back foot, I need to be able to like block the meddler, for example. Okay. Interesting. Okay, so the watchdog gets to go off here. I can't kill two things, which is not great. They have no witnesses? That's weird. Um, so it's kind of more like, which creature do I want to kill? I think it's this Market Watch Phantom. It's just very hard to block. And then they're probably going to kill my Eavesdropper. But I don't have a removal spell for this Watchdog, so this could be problematic. I'm going to just play a face-up offender at large. Like, the Market Watch Phantom is a card I have the least answers for just because they can give it flying. And I don't have any removal. If they kill my offender at large, though, I, I'm probably just getting tempoed out here. Yeah, it looks like it. Yeah, we're dead. All right. <laughs> Quick O2 start. Quick O2 start. This is not the direction that I wanted to go. Quick, quick O2 start. Ugh, should have drafted Boros. You're guaranteed wins when you draft a Boros deck. All right, this is where the, um, the climb begins, okay? Back against the wall. Had a close game and one game that wasn't so close. Let's shake that off here. We have a turn two tunnel tipster. Nothing to follow that up with immediately, but we do have a killer among us if we find uh, land number four. And of course, if we can find a blue source, then the repulsive mutation gets turned on, which is great. Forest from the opponent. Rubble Belt Maverick. Nope. All right, let's... Ooh. I'm going to play the Tunnel Tipster here over the Gravestone Strider because I have Person of Interest that I can draw. So I value the ramp more. Now, obviously, if we draw War Leaders, uh, if we draw the Helix, or the, the, the Glorious Anthem, rather, Strider would have been better, but this is fine. Extract the Confession from the opponent into Face Down Card. 
Okay. I don't think I need to use the repulsive mutation just yet. They're playing black green. Let's play a face down card. This is probably Nervous Gardener. I might have been able to sneak a damage in. I don't really want to cast Fanatical Strength on my Strider though, but I guess it's kind of free-ish. But whenever you play against a green deck, a very high percentage of the time, their first face down card is going to be Nervous Gardener. So the way that I like to approach that is if I'm playing, if I have like Shock, I'll just Shock the first face down card they play if they're playing green. And if they're playing red-white, it's often Dog Walker. Okay, Whipcracker doesn't do anything, which is nice. And they passed. Okay. Let's go ahead and play Killer Among Us, shall we? Oh, this is great with the Crowd Control Warden, too. Should have saved it. Should have saved it. Obviously, they didn't know. <laughs> Look at, okay, they're, they're keeping up mana here, but, so we're just going to attack with our human. Okay, they're blocking with their face down card. Oh my gosh, this mutation is going to be really nice. I feel like I need, I, uh, saving this, killing this face down card. Seems really good. And I'll target my... I don't know what I want to target, though. Probably my face down card, right? Just because it's hard to interact with. And then I can do it for two. To play around Reasonable Doubt. No, they're... They're black-green base. based. They're not going to have Reasonable Doubt. They could have... Mutation, though. Repulsive Mutation of their own. But I'm, I don't think I play around that. So I just do it for four. I'm just not sure what I want to target here. Maybe it's just like another one of these tokens. Just to spread kind of the power. And I don't want on my Strider because I, I don't want that one to die. All right. All right, got Rift Burst Hellion, And now we're going to have three ginormous creatures. This, okay. Oh, are they going to get Izoni? They could. It's Lazav. Lazav's not very interesting here. They can steal my Tunnel Tipster. Yeah. They're basically dead here. Oh, Glintweaver is also nice. Boom. They get a clue, they can steal the tipster. You can have Lazav copy tipster. Oh, it. I keep forgetting that the, this exiles from any graveyard. This doesn't quite work the way that you want it to though. It doesn't give you that attack trigger. Okay, we'll take two. As long as they don't play uh, the sweeper, we're okay. So I probably don't want to play Glintweaver here, but I think this is just going to be a lethal attack anyways. Ooh, that gets in for even more damage. So if they have a removal spell... Oh no, it th what am I saying? I thought I thought Fanatical... For some reason, I thought Fanatical Strength was get a leg up. So I think they would have blocked differently. Oh, this is just lethal. What am I saying? What is, what is this card? Oh, that is really good. That is really good. Uh, let me see. Uh, this 11, 9. Okay, you're still dead. That was a good card, though. Don't good game me with Necropsy in your hand. And then keep playing. Don't do that. All right. One and two. One and two. Let's climb. Let's climb. Uh, optimal mana every game. Optimal mana every game. 
Okay, we are on the play. This hand isn't awesome, but I don't think I can mulligan. We have never want to draw a double Gravestone Strider, but it's a necessary evil for us to cast all of our spells. So what land do I fetch? I want to play the Unyielding Gatekeeper face down, and I have far less planes than anything else. So maybe it's planes, even though red is my secondary color. I do have double Gravestone Strider, so I don't think it's going to matter that much. It's unlikely that they both die. Or it's unlikely that they both die before I either find another mountain or can cast the red spells that I draw. So yeah, let's go ahead and just get the planes. Oh, there's the mountain. Oh, have all of our colors, but we don't have that much power in our hand. Let's play the Gatekeeper face down just because a Fender at large, you have the option to play this um, face up and it's not bad. Oh, Prof's Eidetic Memory. Okay, that's great. Yeah, okay. I'll trade your 4-3 for my face down card. And let's go ahead and play a Fender at large. Attack. I mean, this is how they get back into it, though. They didn't have a land last turn. They drew one this turn, though. Furtive Courier, okay. The, uh, at least Furtive Courier doesn't really work well with Prof's Eidetic Memory, so that's nice. I don't want them to loot, so I just feel like this is actually worth it. And I still had a follow-up play in the extra Gravestone Strider. Face down card from the opponent. And now we can just attack with everything. Flip this up. <laughs> kind of a beating. Yeah. I mean, they've double mulliganed and they just weren't able to really play a game here. They could have makeshift binding here. Okay, that doesn't do anything. That also doesn't do anything. And let's put four counters on this card. Okay, well, two and two. Two and two, the climb, the climb, the reverse sweep. I don't think this deck has what it takes for a reverse sweep, but uh, you never know. What if all of our opponents get unlucky like this one? Okay, on the draw, definitely keeping this. Hopefully they don't have the quickest of starts, but we have the war leaders call turn three, and we do have a creature to play turn two. Uh, they played a tunnel tipster. Question is, which one do I play? Huh. Let's see, how does the sequencing go? Next turn they play a face down card. You know, I actually think it's a Gravestone Strider, just because this prevents us from getting run over, because they're gonna play a face down card here most likely. Uh, never mind, they're not. They're not gonna play a face down card here most likely. Um, yep, let's play the call. Face down card. <laughs> There's the face down card. So they do have a good amount of pressure coming in. If I draw land, playing gadget technician would be pretty nice. Um, alternatively, I can also just play tunnel tipster plus gravestone strider, which is also pretty good. And that sets us up for more mana. And it's not like my gadget technician can actually attack them. So let's do this. And um, plays a little bit better around Reasonable Doubt, which they can still have here. This face down card could be any number of things. Okay, they're not attacking, which is not bad for us. Jaded Analyst and two mana up. Okay. So we have six mana available. So we can play two face down cards this turn. 
think I'm interested in that. All right. And then I think we'll look to probably start doing some attacking next turn. Okay, unauthorized exit on Tunnel Tipster is fine. Or we're going to need to turn this. I don't have no idea what I have no idea what the space down card is, but this cold case cracker is definitely uh, putting some pressure here. I mean, this card is only really good if you have. I mean, it's good, but it's only really good if you have ways to make a bunch of creatures, which we do. We just haven't drawn them. We do have the gadget technician that we can flip up. All right. Well, I'm glad they killed that one because this one makes a token. All right, but we need to start getting in as well. Oh, there it is. We need to start applying pressure as well. All right, they are blocking our face down creature. So we're going to flip this up, make a Thopter. They're going to take five damage this turn. And then we'll just play Tunnel Tipster. Actually, I'm going to play a Case as well. Just to hit my land drops. Let's go ahead and get our island. Play Tunnel Tipster. Just get them low enough. Just get them low enough. I think I'm going to block this face down creature to force the flip. That flyer is kind of annoying. Okay, hard cast Crocodile. Uh, three, four. I can play both of these. I don't have a great attack anymore. I mean, I can attack with my flyer. I don't know what this card is. If they have fanatical strength, that's pretty bad. But this attacking with the flyer gets them quite low. Which I think sets us up for a pretty good uh, alpha strike. If I attack, get them down to 8. Then I play these two. That gets them down to 5. That gets them down to 5. And then I think an attack... Yeah, so I'm going to attack. All right. This could be a green belt radical, which would be pretty not great. But if I wasn't going to attack, then I should have just blocked the cold case cracker. You know what I mean? Get a leg up. I mean, any pump spell kills us. Oh my gosh, we... Oh, we don't... Wait. I Oh my gosh, escape tunnel. If they target their face down creature and then flip it up and it's a big creature, then we die. Wow, escape tunnel? Oh my gosh. What a way to go out. Wait, no, we're at one. They didn't flip it up. Oh my... Oh, it was green belt radical. It felt like green belt radical. Wow. Wow. Okay. 0 02 to 30. Four. That's the magic number. That's where you don't lose that many gems. And it's okay. You're almost break even because at this point, I have all the rares in the set. So anytime I crack packs, I get the gems. So four wins gets you to basically 1500 ish gems. Okay. We have hit rank 12. Uh. This is a really weird... I mean, I have plays. I think I'm going to keep. This is basically a mono green hand, but... I mean, look, this is a blue-red card. That's a red card, but we have three forests. We have a lot of mana fixing in our deck. And if we just draw lands, we can still play Technician, Offender at Large, Fanatical Strength, and Killer Among Us. So I don't think this hand is that bad. And then we can draw, like, Gravestone Strider, turn two. That's perfect. That is absolutely perfect. Because that allows us to potentially play a Gadget Technician face up if we draw a mountain or an island. Innocent Bystander, okay. That's literal worst possible card to draw. And I'm going to pass. Gravestone Strider, excellent blocker here for Innocent Bystander. Uh, would like to find some lands here now. Would like to find some lands. They just passed. Interesting. Tells me they have some kind of a removal spell. But... I'm not going to attack my face down card into the bystander. I'm just going to play face up technician here. Thank you, Gravestone Strider. 
land was a very good draw. And if they use the removal spell to kill the technician, I still have something, something to show for it here. I mean, this has... Wow. They didn't play a face down creature turn three or a removal spell. That is really bizarre. Right? Like turn three is the turn where you play a bunch of stuff. If they pass again, oh man. It's like, what do I do? Okay, I guess their hand their hand is just like all good removal spells, maybe. <laughs> you know what the sad part is? Also bizarre for us. We we drew get a leg up. We literally can't cast anything. That's so ridiculous. Like, get a leg up's going to be good. With Killer Among Us, get a leg up fanatical strength. We can like combo our opponents out. But the, I mean, just at this point, we can basically play almost anything other than combat tricks that we draw. I don't want to attack with this because I think they're happy to block with Innocent Bystander. They're happy to block with Innocent Bystander and um, fl uh, and and draw a card. Wait, they didn't play another thing here. Something is super fishy here. Uh, maybe I should have flipped up the Fender at Large just to get in for some extra damage. This is really, really weird. Unless they just like jam Rakdos. But like what else could they have? It's just a slimy dual leech, okay? Sure. Attack me. Okay. All right. Yeah, I, I should have flipped this up. Maybe I don't even attack with it, but I should have flipped this up. Oh, okay. They have Toxin Analysis. Presumed dead. All right. So that's suspected, so it can't even block. All right, now we can play out a little more stuff. I guess their hand was just terrible. Like, it was just like super awkward. If they cast the Devious Cover up here or Devious the Wrath, it's not too bad. Blood Spatter Analysis, okay. That's going to kill the Flyer, I guess. Not going to save that with Get a Leg Up. Wow, okay. I mean, I'm happy. Okay. I'm happy with this. All right. I hope that doesn't cost us. I, I, it just felt really weird, and I'm not used to that play pattern where opponent just does stone nothing. It looks like they just had a bunch of weird removal spells. I just thought they had a Wrath, and I don't want to overextend into that. So here we are. But we're at a pretty healthy life total. Feeling reasonably safe here. We have a potentially lethal attack here. I don't know if they're going to use a removal spell here. Goblin. Could be murder. Galvanize. Boom. <laughs> All right. Wow. Okay. We went from 0 2 to 4 and 2. 0 2 to 4 and 2. The climb continues, but I'm happy we at least got win number four. A little bit of a rocky start, but coming back. Coming back. Okay, we are on the draw with no green sources and a shock. Let us mulligan this. This hand is also really bad. I got a mulligan. I can't cast anything till like tur yeah. All right, we're going to five. This might be the end of the road. This might be the end of the road. I'm going to keep this hand, I guess. I don't even know what the bottom. The Gravestone Strider gives us the green man. Like it gives us a play. Is it just killer among us? All right. 
I mean, this gives us a two and a three, and we just have to hope for the best. Oh, there was the green. Well, uh, now I wish I had the tipster over the gravestone strider. Yeah, I mean, the tipster, I guess, gets the block here. Oh, the second strider. Okay, this was like the worst combination of just like double mulligan into drawing like multiple gravestone striders. This is going to be tough. Did they mulligan as well? I'm not sure. Oh, they're looking for mana. Okay, this could be... Oh, they didn't hit something. <laughs> oh, man. I kept the Strider because I didn't have a green source, and I just felt like with the majority of my deck being green, I, I just needed it. Wow, Eavesdropper was kind of perfect. Assailant comes into play tapped, so we get to get in that turn. If I draw a land, I can flip this up. Was kind of hoping they played a face down card there so that I have the shock. Let's see what they do here. They could like galvanize. Okay, so they have that. Let's see. I can still attack with these two. And I don't think they have a great block. Because I can crack my clue to turn my eavesdropper into a 4-4. And then I can shock the face down card. Now, they, they did keep up a black. So that does mean that they could have toxin analysis. But yeah, we'll see how they... Um, we'll see how they... Like, I want to shock this morph. I want to shock this morph if possible. Interesting. That's a weird block. Okay. Um, yep, I suppose we do this. And if it's a toxin analysis, it's a toxin analysis. It probably is, to be honest, but yeah. I feel like we'll we'll still be able to utilize this shock in some way. We got to get in for some amount of damage, but yeah. I don't know that we can just do nothing there. You know what I mean? All right, so this could be cracking a clue. They want to keep hitting their land drops. They're probably going to play a face down card here now. No, it's a clandestine meddler. Okay. They're going to target... No, they target nothing. Let's... Uh, crack this clue. Oh, mutation is great. The question is, do I keep it up for two or do I try to get greedy and like get a much bigger one off? I think I keep it up for two. I don't need to play Gravestone Strider here. That still gives me like a really, really nice threat. Uh, I could also move it over to... Uh, you know, that's actually interesting. I, could, I can put it onto the Gravestone Strider. That would turn that into a 3-5. Or do I want a 5-5 five, five eavesdropper? Let's make a 3-5 gravestone strider. Red black has a lot of spot removal, so just like spreading spreading the removal seems pretty good. I don't want to attack with the eavesdropper just yet. I'll keep a forest in my hand in case they have unscrupulous agent. Yeah, I, I'm not sure about this. If I put it on the eavesdropper, I guess I could have attacked for five here. I don't want to trade this and I don't want to fire off the shock right away. Double red up. Okay. I think I feel like we're falling behind now on board. 
Person of interest is good though. All right, let's just attack with these two. The way I see it, we let that trade happen. Going down to three is kind of precarious, but they don't have a great block on the Gravestone Strider. I mean, I kind of want to shock this face down card. It could be Dog Walker, though. I mean, if it's Dog Walker, they should probably just like double block or something. With like Alley Assailant plus Dog Walker to try to kill it. Although they get blown out by shock if they do. If they flip it up. Although they don't have to flip it up. They can just double block and see what I do. If they double block and see what I do, I still shock the face down card. And I do have the mana to shock plus cast person of interest. I I feel like I gotta kill this. All right. Oh yeah, that would have gotten them some action probably. Okay. What do you have? Sanitation Automaton. Murder into the... Oh, they don't have double black. I think I just want to make an aggressive attack. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Was that good? War leaders call off the top. I'll take it. Sure. What do they get back? Uh, I guess they get back Rubble Belt, Braggart, and Offender at Large or something. I don't know. We're at 18 life. It should be pretty difficult for us to lose. Now we're at, we have four lethal attackers, and any creature we draw off the top is also lethal. Yep. If they can find eight more damage here. Or a removal spell doesn't do it. Yep. Okay. The comeback continues. The comeback continues. Wow. O2 into five and O with a double mulligan. We double mulligan that game and kept the pretty, pretty dicey one, but we managed to claw back from that one. Ooh, I did not. I did not anticipate winning that one. Okay, we got a mythic opponent this time. It's good. It's going to be a challenge. What do we have? Uh, yeah, I'll keep. It's it's a little bit slow for sure. But we do have Case of the Shattered Pack to get us land number three to start playing out face down cards. This hand definitely capable of getting run over. But I think I keep. And I think I'm going to get an island because I have the repulsive mutation. And these are red, but I can also cast them face down. And I have like six mountains in my deck. So I think it's better. All right. They might have a shock there. There was that bit of a delay. Or they have full control on. Innocent bystander. Okay. Yeah, let's go ahead and get an island here. I'm going to play that Fender at large because there is a shot. We draw a mountain. There is a shot. We draw a mountain. So I could play the Gadget Technician face up next turn if we get lucky. If not, we just play another Fender at large face down probably with a get a leg up up. All right, I kind of want to stave off some offense, so let's just block here. If they have the chases on, they're not adding to their board. Oh, they could have had Gadget Technician. Wow, they didn't flip it up? Okay, so they're really trying to get aggressive here. L 
Maybe they shock my face down card. Jeez. Okay. I don't know that we're going to beat this. Oh, we drew a mountain. That definitely helps. But we don't have a good, like, repulsive mutation target, you know? I might need to use get a leg up here. I might have to. Oh, Crime Stopper Sprite? Okay. Sure. Yeah, I think that's what I want to do. The question is, do I want to kill the bystander, give them a clue, or just kill a thopter? Man, this is tough. Okay, let's uh, let's just kill that. If they had a shock, you just... Okay, whatever. That doesn't make that much sense to me, honestly. I, I guess if they want to play around get a leg up, actually, it's fine. Yeah, okay. Uh, when it's turned fade, uh, if you control return to battlefield tapped. Otherwise, it's controller. Okay, so I can make a thopter. Whew. Okay, three, four, five. We have six men available. I can also just play a three-two. Oh man. So I can make a Thopter to block as well. Okay. Let's block here and let's block here. I believe. I, I just, how am I gonna beat these flyers? I am not sure is the answer. <laughs> I am not sure. All right. This might be the end of the road. Blue, red, all the gadget technicians. Nice, nice, proactive tempo deck. And our deck is a little bit on the clunky, sky, cl clunky side. We were forced to make some game actions. We try to make a game out of it. Oh, and then Cryptic Coat, sure. All right. Look, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. Uh, honestly, still pretty happy with this run given the 0-2 start, and we ended up losing to a Mythic player with uh, with a nice tempo deck with Cryptic Coat. So it happens, and another five win finish. I wanna get another trophy here for the YouTube. I, I do want it, but like I said, can't complain too much about how this ended up. This was kind of a weird deck. Um, we started out with War Leader's Call, and then we reckon, it felt like red was kind of open, but white wasn't. And so then we just kept taking a bunch of like face down red cards. Also unclear that green was open, but we ended up just kind of drafting this. Green is so deep, you can still kind of get it to work because we still had okay green, even though we didn't have all the green. We didn't get a single Nervous Gardener or Bite Down on Crime. And generally, if you don't end up with one of those two cards, it means that it is somewhat contested. But I think overall, we still had a decent deck and our mana was actually reasonably good. Uh, to be able to allow us to cast the War Leader's Call. And that's because we took cards like the Gravestone Strider very highly. Um, I think this was definitely a decent, a reasonable example of balancing power and your mana curve, where we did take a Gravestone Strider, for example, over Archdruid's Charm. And I think that was really, really important because we were still a little bit light on things to do early. Uh, with this deck, that was kind of the biggest weakness. We have th three twos and a shock. So it's a little bit lower than I'd like, but like I said, I, I kept like, the only other time I could have taken a two that I liked was Sanitation Automaton over maybe Person of Interest, I think. And then uh, Red Herring obviously is not the type of two drop that you want in this type of deck. So there's actually no good red early drop that's a common that you want to play. I guess there's Innocent Bystander, and if we saw some, we probably would have taken them. Uh, or maybe just 
my eyes were blinded and I didn't see it. But anyways, got five wins here. Got five wins here. Had a bunch of cool uncommons and rares. War Leaders Call did a lot of work. Repulsive Mutation was great. And uh, really happy with the result given the O2 start. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. Really do appreciate it. Feel free to hit the like or subscribe button for more daily videos just like this. If you wanted to support this channel in other ways, I did launch recently launch my Patreon channel. Link is in the description below. Shout out to all the Patreons. Really appreciate all of you. Thank you so much. I'll catch you tomorrow.